Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a face blur effect using the tracker node on the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. So, we have this clip here where a woman's doing yoga, and if we play back the clip in the timeline you can see that the face moves over time. So let's say hypothetically we wanted to go ahead and blur that out. So what we need to do is take this clip and go over to the Fusion page. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get the data for the tracked position of the face. And we're going to do that with a tracker node. So after media in, we're going to want to right click on the line and go down to add tool and then do tracking and tracker. So this should connect media in to tracker one. Doesn't need to feed into media out, but we can leave it there for now. Now if we look onto one of the preview screens, we should see the tracker pop open as long as we have the tracker selected in the bottom node selection. So what we're going to do is go to frame zero on the timeline to use as the starting position for the tracking. And then we need to drag the tracker into position. So in the top left hand corner, there'll be a tiny box. So you can click on that to drag it to where it needs to be and find where it is more or less zoomed in on the person's face. We can also hit control and middle mouse wheel in in order to zoom in a little bit more and see exactly what we're targeting here. So to get a little bit more accuracy on this tracking, I will increase the range for the search width and height, just in case. And I'll also change the bounds for the target area. So I don't want any of that sky background to be tracked at all. So we want to make sure that this is focusing on the person's face and pretty much solely that. Um, next, we can also change adaptive mode from none to best match. So changing it to best match will have the tracker reacquire the pattern as lighting changes on the face uh, may shift a bit over time. So with those set up, we can go ahead and start tracking. And since we're doing it from frame zero, we want to track in the forward direction. So we just need to hit track forward from current time. And hopefully what should happen is that the tracker should stay centered on the person's face for the entire duration of the shot. It works really well with this particular clip because the movement is relatively slow and the object we're trying to track is large and nothing gets in its way as well. So it's a really good candidate for this kind of tracking. So with all of that, we have the tracking data for the person's face. So we need to create a blur now and then apply the tracking data to adjust the position of that blur shape. So let's move the timeline back to frame zero so that we can see the clip. And I'm also going to disconnect tracker to media out since that's not going to be the final connector node. Rather, we're going to create a blur node and then that will feed into media out using media in as the input. So let's right click and do add tool, go to blur, and then we can just choose blur from the drop down. So let's connect media in to blur and then blur to media out. Now, if we take the blur size in the inspector and we increase it beyond one, it's going to blur out the entire clip. So how we blur out specifically the face and not the entire clip is that we apply a shape mask to the blur and then that'll connect as this blue connector here. So we can do right click and add tool, go down to the mask nodes and find the shape you want to use. Uh, generally, we'll use ellipse for face since it's, relative, since it's roughly an oval shape. And then we need to take this ellipse node and connect it to the blur. So when we do that, you can see that everything outside of this ellipse shape is no longer blurred. So we just need to position and size the ellipse shape on the person's face now. So I will drag that up there so it is centered on the face. And we can shrink the size of this ellipse until it pretty much covers just the person's face. We can adjust that position a little bit more if we so choose. We can also go to the blur and maybe decrease the blur amount a bit. It doesn't need to be that extreme. So the final step is that we need to apply the tracking data to this face shape. As you can see, right now it doesn't move across time with the person's movement. So we can apply that tracker data to a property of the ellipse. And the one we want to target is the center position. So that would be what you control with this uh, red gizmo, the up to bottom and left to right arrows. And so we can just apply the data directly to that property by right clicking on the property, going down to connect to, choosing tracker one, and then choosing offset position. And if when you do that, you want it to be more clear which tracker you're actually using the data from, you can go over to the tracker node, select the tracker, and then double click on the tracker name in order to rename it. So you could call it face, 
And then when you actually click on the property and do the right click, and let's go ahead and remove it really quick, and then right click on it and do connect to tracker one, you'll see the name of the tracker pop in here. So face offset position would be a little bit clearer of a name than tracker one if you happen to be using multiple trackers in your project. So anyway, once you've applied the tracker data, the offset position, then when you hit play on the timeline, it should move in line with the tracker data that we got earlier. So when we hit play, you can see the person's face is moving and the ellipse is also moving along with the face, which is exactly what we want. And that is basically how you can blur out a moving face using trackers inside of DaVinci Resolve. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.